So if you've watched any of my previous videos on Canelo Alvarez's fights since his rematch with Golovkin, you may have noticed I always talk about the peculiar tactic Canelo employs by pressuring his opponent's back by stepping his lead foot forward only. This is what Canelo does to strategically break down his opponents who may be longer or larger than him at the higher weight classes, and it was no different Saturday night against Caleb Plant. As you can see, Canelo inches his lead foot forward, but doesn't bring the rest of his body forward with it. You can see from the green line that Canelo is leaning back at the same time. The short explanation for this is because the distance between two fighters is the distance between each other's lead foot. It isn't determined by how far his head is, it's the lead foot. So Canelo has essentially stepped into the danger zone. He has stepped into punching range, and he does this to pressure Plant to do one of three things. That's attack Canelo, stand there in the danger zone, or move away to reset and create distance. By keeping his head back, Canelo gives himself a little extra distance, which gives him a split second longer to see punches coming his way if Plant decides to attack him so he could defend or counter then continue the pressure. And as you can see, Plant opts to take a step back, and this is the slow burn tactic of Canelo. He will force you to back up and move around all night. He'll bait out punches he could defend against, and he'll make you think about what punches he's gonna throw. All of this is to slowly break you down. However, Plant came prepared for this and would time Canelo's step forward with a punch. Sergei Kovalev had a similar strategy against Canelo, and just like Kovalev, Plant saw some success with this. As Canelo steps in, Plant first sticks out his lead hand. This measures and controls the distance so that he knows where Canelo is, but it also serves to temporarily blind Canelo and occupy his guard. So now Plant is ready to attack. So you see Plant times Canelo's next step in beautifully as you see he begins launching his attack before Canelo's foot even touches the ground. You see Canelo stepping forward and his foot is still mid-air. This takes away Canelo's ability to counter from here. Plant steps in deep to land a left hook and right hand. This is relatively safe for him because he timed his attack while Canelo's foot was still mid-air, so Canelo wouldn't be able to counter right away. The brilliance of this, however, comes due to the fact that the deep step in is a direct counter to Canelo's lean back while stepping forward. If Plant didn't step in deep, Canelo would have been able to catch the punches or pull away from them. Shoutouts to this one insightful commenter on my Shakur Stevenson vs Jamel Herring video who said you could essentially step in deep or follow up with another punch to land on someone stepping their lead foot forward like Canelo. And Canelo's left hook counter comes late because he lost valuable time getting his foot down. Let's compare this to a similar situation. As you can see, Canelo steps his lead foot forward and keeps his head and body back. You're gonna see that Canelo leans forward to bait out the punch, and once the punch comes, you see Canelo is able to counter the punch that he baited out with a left hook to the body. We see the adjustment that Caleb Plant made. Instead of attacking Canelo after Canelo steps in, he's gonna attack Canelo at the same time as his step in so that Canelo can't counter back. And this wasn't the only way Caleb Plant countered this. He would also use his length advantage, his size advantage, to shoot jabs from maximum distance, timing Canelo's steps in. As you see, as Canelo steps in, Caleb Plant times it perfectly with a jab from long distance as Canelo's foot is still mid-air. And Canelo can't possibly counter from there with his foot mid-air. And he, even if he did, he's from maximum distance, so he wouldn't be able to reach Caleb Plant from here. The thing is, even though Plant had a lot of success in the first half of the fight, this was all still falling in line with Canelo's pressure game plan. Plant would have to keep moving around and constantly throwing punches, which is extremely draining over the course of the fight. Meanwhile, Canelo is conserving his energy for explosions the moment Plant finally sits still for a breather. And while big punches like this can be defended early in the fight, after being fatigued and broken down, they'll become much harder to defend. Now because Caleb Plant utilizes the Philly shell, a very effective last line of defense out of that stance is to bend down at the waist to avoid punches as you see Floyd Mayweather does. 
I'm not comparing the two, so calm down. But I bring this up because this is a defensive technique that both guys utilized against Canelo. As you see Floyd Mayweather, when he finds himself in the position where he expects a punch to come, he just bends down at the waist to avoid the punch. Similarly, we're going to see Caleb Plant put himself in a similar position as he walks himself back into the corner. He's going to leave himself with nowhere to go. So as you see, he Plant bends down at the waist to avoid the jab from Canelo. And bending down at the waist has a crucial weakness in that you're a sitting duck until you come back up to your boxing stance. You can't punch. You can't really move that well. The only options Plant has here is to bob up and down the way Floyd Mayweather does to avoid punches or to clinch since he's already trapped in the corner and has nowhere to go. Instead of retracting his hand and trying to tee off and missing like he did against Mayweather, Canelo knows he's more likely to land a punch if he sets it up. With Plant bent down and having nowhere to go but back up, Canelo uses forearm control to hold Plant's head still so he can land the right hand. Even better, you see Plant tries to step out to his right to smother Canelo and get away from his right hand, but you see Canelo smartly pivots with Plant to keep him in the firing line of his right hand. Canelo knows this is Plant's only escape option, and that's why Canelo is able to cut him off so quickly. And there you see the right hand land from Canelo. Here we see Canelo back Plant into a corner, and then once Plant bends down at the waist, you see Canelo tees off and misses the way he did against Mayweather until he controls Plant first with the lead hand, then is able to land a right hand to the body and a left hook up top. That's when he's able to land once he controls them. And similarly here, you see Canelo lands a left hook, and instead of teeing off and missing, he goes for control first to set up this next left hook. He misses the follow-up, but he lands that first one instead of missing. Another thing I want to add to this is that Canelo not only controls Plant, he also steps to an advantageous position. See, using control to land a punch is effective, but another effective way to land a punch is to move to an advantageous position. You see, as Canelo is controlling Plant, he simultaneously steps outside of Plant's shoulder, making it impossible for Plant to punch or even clinch while he's bent down there. You see, Canelo does both of these techniques at the same time, putting him in the most advantageous position possible to land a punch. Here's Canelo getting Mayweather to bend down at the waist all along the ropes and then failing to land anything on him. And then here's Canelo against Plant, controlling him bent down at the waist and stepping around so that he could land the left hand. You see, Canelo has shown he has the understanding that when opponents are in a vulnerable position, such as when bent down at the waist, they still have ways to defend themselves. You could try to take the opportunity right away and throw punches immediately, or do what a more experienced fighter would do, and instead take the opportunity to put themselves at an advantageous position first, then punch. Of course, for more examples of this concept, we need to look no further than Lomachenko, who's one of the best at securing positions at every opening, then punching. As always, thank you everybody for watching. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, please subscribe to the channel and consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to do so. Special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons, Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Dmitry Drozdov, and Albert Chen. You guys keep the channel going, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.